on behalf of entire Indian pet food industry and ecosystem partner, I would like to welcome you to the stage. For the first time in the history of pet food industry, we have been able to create a platform at a stage which is coveted World Food India. So World Food India 2024 has given us a platform to showcase us coming together, showcasing the collaboration, connection, and partnering with each stakeholder who is responsible for the growth uh, and the upkeeping of the pet food industry in India. It gives me immense pleasure that this particular session has been endorsed by Ministry of Food Processing Industries, as well as PIKI, which is a, a partner organization, which is Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industries, and Invest India, who is, who is supporting organization for conducting all the events together. This is, a, this is a great opportunity for all of us because it came with a lot of effort, persistence, pers perseverance, which we have been continuously doing with the ministry as well as the key stakeholder. And at, at this juncture, I, it, it, it takes immense pride to share that we have been able to come together on one industry platform and share our voice. As part of World Food India 2024, the Ministry of Food Processing Industries has a very clear vision and leveraging this particular platform towards growth and development of Indian economy and how, how pet food as a sector can play that pivotal role towards betterment of entire food processing industry in totality. And Ministry also understands, acknowledges that this is a particular sector which has not been given the due focus as well as the support which is needed. And this could have been happen because we have been consistently following as well as reaching out and convincing to the stakeholders. And, and this is a great win for all of us. And to begin with the session, I would like to thank the uh, cabinet minister, honorable Mr. Chirag Paswanji, uh, as well as uh, Minister of State, uh, Mr. Uh, Rajnish ji, as well as uh, Secretary Ma'am, Ms. Anita Praveen, who has been one of the key spokesperson on behalf of pet food industry to be there as part of this forum. Now, when we look back into the pet food industry in totality, the pet food industry is an emerging sector which has been acknowledged. At the same time, the, the, the growth rate at which the pet food industry is moving forward is significant. The key reasons for that we all know is the most important thing is the significant pet population which is growing on a year on year basis of 12 percentage. And it has been reported that 35 million pets exist in India as latest as 2023. And on the basis of the significant pet population, this industry is also growing at a year-on-year -year rate of 15 percentage. The last reported numbers for the pet food industry was $600 million, which is 2023. And this is slated to be a $1.3 billion industry by 2026. So these are all the macro factors. These are all the positive factors, which are the key reason that pet food industry is at a center stage and ministry also acknowledges. Having said that, we are also at a juncture where we also need to focus on what are the specific opportunities and the challenges that paid food industry has in future. And to, to do that, we are here on a platform where we are connecting, collaborating, and also sharing our thought process as an ecosystem partner. So we, we have been fortunate to invite all ecosystem partner, including industry, including the uh, academia, including key pet care ecosystem uh, influencers, as well as prescription partners, in veterinarians, and retailers, and, and the animal welfare organization. So this has been a cohesive ecosystem which is there on the diaspora today. And with this, uh, we also want to focus on following key themes throughout this panel discussion. And the key areas for focus are 
how we can harness together the policy framework and the regulatory environment in the country. Then what are the key growth drivers which are important considering the innovation, technology, as well as the sustainability areas. Then exploring the key market growth levers and the drivers and also the opportunities. And creating a sustainable and resilient pet food ecosystem, which is, which is a thriving environment for not only for the pet food industry in totality, also the pet care ecosystem partners. And as a, as a, as a role of pet care eco par, ecosystem partner plays a very, very important in this juncture. And with this, I would, I would like to also emphasize on how the key stakeholders like veterinarians, animal nutritionists, animal health experts, retailers, as well as groomers, and there are multiple ecosystem partners who are playing that role. On behalf of entire pet food industry and the key opinion leaders and the partners who are present here, I would like to hand over this stage now to the moderator, Ms. Neetu Bansal. I would like to invite you on the stage, Neetu, please, to conduct the panel discussion on this particular topic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Govind. It's my pleasure to be here, and uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, my pleasure to be here to, to invite you to this exciting and interesting industry first session on pet care industry in India. It's, it's a privilege uh, to be with you, with all of you. Uh, it's a landmark moment, like Govind said, it's the very first time that we've got an opportunity in the World Food Forum to talk about the pet care industry in India. Govin talked about how the industry is growing. It's been growing at a phenomenal rate in the last few years. It's poised to grow at a very uh, good rate. It's poised to grow. It's poised to double itself in the coming few years. We also know it will play a vital role in the FMCG sector in the coming years. And when, a, when an industry is growing at such a great pace, it calls upon for all of us to come together as an ecosystem and figure out how we can address the opportunities, the challenges that lie ahead. So today's panel discussion is all about discussing the pet food sector in India. We'll be, we'll be talking about, uh, we'll have industry veterans join us today. Uh, they are experts in this sector who've been leading the sector, like Govind talked about. We've got, uh, we've got the industry representatives, we've got veterinarians representing uh, today, we've got the animal welfare uh, group coming here, we've got Varun from uh, the, the commerce side of things. And what we'll be talking about today and delving into is what are the opportunities that lie ahead? What are the challenges that the sector is likely to face? And how can we shape the future of the industry? We'll talk about the trends, the regulatory space, and the essential role that proper nutrition can pave in the welfare of our loved pets. Before we dive in, a reminder for what are the objectives of the session. We are looking forward to explore the current state of the Indian pet food market, identify the opportunities and challenges, and together as an industry, how can we come together to create a more robust ecosystem for pets and pet patients alike? So without further ado, let me invite the panelists on stage. I'll introduce the panelists one by one, and I would request as I introduced the panelists to please come on stage and join us on the stage. My first panelist call is to Mr. Satinder Singh. He's no new name in the industry. He's a veteran. He leads, he's the general manager at Royal Cannon India. He leads the company's growth and strategic direction and gives strategic direction to the Indian pet food market. Extensive experience in the FMCG and pet care sectors, and I'm sure he's got a lot of valuable insights to share with us today. Next on stage, I'd like to call upon Pallavi Anand, she represents the Purina Pet Care Business of India. She's overseeing the company's operations, growth strategies, product innovations. With over a decade of experience in pet care, she, she, she is pivotal in bringing global expertise to India, and we're honored to have you, Pallavi, with us. Next on stage, we've got Mr. Varun Sadana. He represents the startup ecosystem, co-founder of Supertails. It's an innovative startup makes life easy for the, 
for the pet parents, providing a holistic pet care solution to the industry. Uh, what he's providing is high quality pet food and veterinary services in one platform and making life easier for pet parents to take care of their pets. With a strong background in scaling businesses and a deep understanding of pet, pet food trends, needs, Varun will be at the forefront of revol revolutionizing the pet care experience. Next on stage, I'd like to call upon a very important stakeholder in the ecosystem, the, the wet perspective. We've got Mr. Makrand Chavan. He's the General Secretary of the Federation of Small Animal Practitioners Association of India. Uh, 18 state uh, associations report into him. He also leads the Pet Practitioners Association for Mumbai. He's a prominent figure, not new to the industry. Mr. Chavan has dedicated his career to improving the standards of veterinary care and advocating for the well-being of pets. Joining us also is Mr. Umesh Kalahali. He, uh, he has been associated with Mars Pet Care. He's got close to two decades of experience. And with his vast experience in pet nutrition, veterinary care, and product development, he's a recognized thought leader in the industry. We've also got, uh, we've also got uh, Ms. Geeta representing animal welfare. I'm, she was running a bit late. She's on her way. Uh, she'll join us shortly uh, as she finds her way. Yeah. So uh, with this, uh, let me now start the session for the day. And uh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Everyone can hear me well? Yes. Okay, so I now would like to open the session. Uh, the first question that I would like to maybe open the session with. Sorry. Yes, We've got this. <laughs> okay, let me take. Uh, the honors of inviting Geeta on stage. Yeah. Geeta, welcome. Thank you. So Geeta is the CEO of Friendicos. She champions the cause of animal welfare. She's a very respected uh, lead, uh, lead uh, she leads the welfare organization, uh, Friendicos. She's got decades of experience in animal rescue, rehabilitation, and advocacy, and she's been tirelessly advocating for the human treatment of strays. So we've got her important perspective uh, joining us in, in the session today. Yeah. Thank you. So... Welcome, everyone. I'm looking forward to an enriching discussion with all of you here. The first one I'd like to maybe uh, start with is briefly, uh, the sector has been evolving. We are poised for a lot of growth. Uh, I I'd like to maybe start with Satinder. What are your thoughts on the evolution of the sector in the last few years? How have you seen the sector evolving? Hello. Is it? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Uh, you know, I think the uh, the testimony of that sector is evolving is this platform. Uh, you know, it's uh, it has taken a lot of years for us to uh, get some level of recognition and support from, uh, you know, the relevant stakeholders. Uh, I think uh, you all deserve a round of applause uh, that, you know, we got that recognition. Uh, I, I give it, uh, you know, uh, the credit to all of us and all of you. Uh, you know, that's the, that's the evolution. Uh, but at the same time, I think we have not even scratched the surface as far as the potential of this market, this country is concerned. Uh, you know, as Govind was saying that, you know, we have a, a significant pet population. Uh, I don't know how many of you know that uh, our, uh, India's pet population uh, is uh, much higher than France, Germany, Italy, Canada, Australia. But at the same time, the, the size of the category is fraction of these markets. That tells that, you know, the size of, uh, the, 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 the price of opportunity which we are sitting on. Uh, the growing pet population is one part of it. And I think uh, if, we, if we fundamentally look at that, you know, how this category is evolving, it, is, it has direct correlation with the GDP growth. Uh, the GDP per capita increases and the, you know, the level of uh, increase per spend, spend per 
pet uh, goes up and that happens with the you know the the evolution and and you know both these people who are sitting uh, on on my sides and ma'am uh, you know obviously you know these two people as well so we have seen uh, I'm, I'm in this industry from last 18 years and you know uh, you know uh, these three people are maybe way more than uh, that they have started they have seen started seeing this industry uh, the it starts with the uh, you know basic uh, products and services uh, you know the basic nutrition and basic wet care but you know it it gets evolved over a period of time where people expect a uh, bit more sophistication uh, better quality both in services uh, and products and services and this is what we are seeing uh, you know the the evolution and i think we have not even scratched the surface uh, there are a lot sure, of opportunities in 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 you know understanding uh, these opportunities and and work on that sure. but i think it it's 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 emerging very well we should all be proud of it mr makran would you like to add anything uh, to the evolution with from your perspective uh, yeah hi hi everybody uh, it's early, early morning so nobody is sleeping i'm very, very happy about <laughs> it so you all look like fresh flowers uh, it's the, the the pet care and the pet food industry has evolved to a great extent what we had uh, i graduated in 1999 so uh, those were the days when there were single wet clinics maybe half of them were practicing in some garage or part time practice day time some different work maybe day time into government job or teaching or or cattle or horse practice or poultry and evening they were looking they were sitting in their small clinics and doing consultations but over the period of time there is a great change the paradigm has changed and now is the era of multi multi vet clinics with uh, great facilities and also there is there is a great scope and but yes at he, as he said it is just tip of the iceberg yeah. and we have way to I go. think but it's evolving fast with what you're describing we've also moved to the era of yeah. pet saloons and yeah. clinics yeah. Like, as like fast coming up are doing very well, yeah, yeah. Uh, what would you like to add add your thoughts on the evolution a bit as well because you've just entered the sector with you with your startup yeah thank you um, uh, great question i'm sure uh, you know actually sadender sir has covered quite a bit of it i'll try to give another angle to it the evolution actually the i would say the revolution that we are in is actually the relationship between the pet and the human that's changing uh 10 saal pehle pet was a functional animal pet meant a dog practically right agar 10 saal pehle bolta mera ghar mein pet hai acha aapke ghar dog hai that's changing right pets mean very different things now right it's a, it's a cat it's a fish everything number 2 it was a functional animal कुत्ता घर की रखवाली करता था आज अगर घर में चोरी हो रही है तो पहले देखते हैं कुत्ते को बचाओ पहले बिकॉज यू स्पेंड अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम एंड एफर्ट एंड मनी राइट सो थिंग्स आर चेंज द रिलेशनशिप इज चेंज ना सो इफ यू लुक एट एंड आई कीप इट शॉर्ट दैट द टू पार्ट्स टू दिस रिलेशनशिप द फर्स्ट फॉर द पेट द पेट इज चेंजिंग फ्रॉम अ फंक्शनल एनिमल टू अ कंपेनियन एनिमल एंड स्लोली इट बिकम फैमिली राइट एंड बी अ पार्ट ऑफ दैट रिवोल्यूशन कहीं जगह हो चुका है हम फोटोग्राफ्स देखते हैं इंस्टाग्राम पे एक माय बेबी राइट एंड लॉट ऑफ दोज लव साइंस राइट एंड दे रेफरिंग टू द पेट राइट एंड दिस इज वेरी कॉमन बाय द वे राइट एंड रिलेटेड टू दिस इज द डेमोग्राफी ऑफ पीपल हु आर डूइंग दिस राइट टेन इयर्स अगो इट वाज क्वाइट इम्पॉसिबल टू सी अ ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री ईयर ओल्ड ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर ओल्ड जस्ट आउट ऑफ कॉलेज यार खुद को संभाल लेते हैं ये सब तो मम्मी पापा ने मना ही किया है ना ये तो तब करेंगे जब हमारी शादी हो चुकी होगी बड़े हो जाएंगे things are changing i i don't have to tell you that we're all seeing i'm sure some of us have kids who already have pets right? absolutely and my 12 years old keep nagging me to get one home <laughs> <laughs> the 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 thir- third way i would say is the relationship of how the human is changing the human is changing from being a pet owner to being a pet parent ये वर्ड बहुत काफी कॉमन हो चुका है बाय द वे 10 साल पहले कोई पेट पेरेंट बोलता था अरे 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 क्या बात कर रहे हो यू नो इट वाज बॉर्डर लाइन अब शकुन राइट आई विल बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट कीपिंग अ कैट आई रिमेंबर 13 इयर्स अगो आई वेंट टू बैंगलोर केप्ट अ कैट 13 साल पहले एक नॉर्थ इंडियन कमिंग टू बैंगलोर कीपिंग अ पेट किसी को बताने में डर लगता था कि मेरे घर में बिल्ली है मतलब तुम्हारा रास्ता कैसे कटता है ये बताओ मतलब हाउ डू यू नेविगेट दैट मेज राइट so just to summarize 
I, I look at it as a revolution where number one, the relationship is changing, the relationship for the pet is changing. It's not a functional pet. It's now going to be a family part of it. And for the human, the relationship is changing because you know, we're not no longer going to be pet owners, we're going to be pet parents. Absolutely. Pallavi, would you like to build on this? Very hard to build on so many points that have been made on both a quantitative and qualitative level. But I mean, to start with, I think, uh, and Satinder rightly said that from just the overall numbers, it's staggering. From and Varun talk spoke about it, and uh, and which is what actually amazes me the most the the whole relationship. And there's a fundamental shift, and you know that a category will grow when you see that fundamentally consumers are changing, and you can see that you can see that around you, you can see that in you know our own houses and so on. But I think what is uh, extremely important to and I feel extremely lucky to actually be part of this category now. I'm relatively new to the category, uh, as against a lot of veterans here, is that there are not so many categories in India that are new and nascent, but growing at this resilient pace. So I feel extremely lucky to be here, because as Satinder said, yes, we've just scratched the surface. When we look at other markets, or even look you know, within our own households, we, we can, you can already imagine what this category will be like. I think it's just like you know um, a small sapling that has started to show some green shoots. But I think the large point is that it needs nurturing. It needs to be uh, nurtured with a lot of love and care so that it gets you know, to the state we all want it to. And of course, here and is And that's there. one of the objectives that we exactly. are hoping to achieve in today's yes. session. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Geeta ma'am now, uh, from your perspective, given you're so close to pets and have such a loving relationship, how have you seen uh, this evolving? The pet industry? Yes. Okay, so I deal with uh, pets and animals in a totally different context. Um, running shelters, mobile clinics, etc. And um, I would just like to contribute just one thing. Everyone's talked about the growing pet parent, the affection between their dog and them. Um, I would just make a humble request that that same love and that same compassion should be extended also to the street animals. <coughs> And that when we find that people adopt street animals, uh, feed them in the streets, then I think that's an extension of the same concept of being a pet parent, but to a large number of, I might say, orphaned and abandoned animals. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Umesh, uh, any, any additions uh, to what all of us have already yeah, been discussing? I mean, so I think they covered most of it, I lost, but I can say that. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to congratulate and okay, thank the people who are organizing uh, this event, you know, in a, such a great platform. Uh, that indicates okay, how the pet food really is gaining a importance and getting a visibility. So being in this field for almost okay, two decades, you know, being an academic and industry and the researcher and now the practitioner, I've seen how the, okay, the journey has been in the pet food in India. Uh, so I remember, okay, so as the Avarant said, you know, the pets have taken a different place. Uh, so it's totally replacing the kids in the house. And it's okay, also okay, the, the lifestyle of the people has changed so much in the last okay, two decades. And we have a so-called okay, double income, no kids. And uh, obviously the pets have become an integral part of their okay, life now. So it's not surprising to see any family photo nowadays with a pet. Uh, so obviously with this, okay, the demand for and the pressure, the uh, pet care industry is really, really evolved and it's trying to meet the demands. And I see that pet parents are more demanding than before, okay, what I've seen in the 20 years ago and now. And uh, so they want the best in the service, best in the products. And obviously pet food has played a very, very important role. Uh, with the introduction of the pet food, okay, almost two decades ago and now, I see that okay, even the standard of our practice has improved dramatically. So those days, as uh, you know, uh, Makrand was telling, uh, the practice used to be kind of a somewhere in the corner, 10 by 10. Now we have moved to the corporate hospital, the big hospital. So the reason why is that, okay, so pets have become a very important part of our society. And uh, this continue to grow. And uh, we have a, a new generation pet parents. And that's what I really look into that. Obviously, the demand and service is going to continue to increase, and okay, so it's really exciting. Okay, one of the category which I always look forward. Thank to. you. Yeah. I think we've we've well covered how the uh, thing has been evolving. Pets, pets, the relationship that pet parents have with their 
pets is evolving, the demands from the industry is evolving, uh, the services therefore that are required are evolving, and there is a lot of potential that we still to tap into. Which brings me to my next question, and I would like to uh, maybe from the, from the evolution now come to the current landscape, and uh, 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 Satinder, I, I would like to ask you from, from a current landscape point of view, how do you see what are the opportunities that will shape the sector going forward? I think uh, you know if we uh, we are all very bullish and excited about the you know the the pet industry and the relationship how it is evolving, but I feel very fundamentally it's not still it is not easy to keep a pet in India. So the way we are on one side, uh, the government has focus, or you know we have seen that it has a, a ease of doing business has an impact on the growth of uh, the the country or the GDP. Uh, I think fundamentally, as a as a stakeholders in the industry, we should focus on uh, ease of having a pet. It's not easy to have a pet in a country like India. Uh, you know, uh, if I if I look at uh, you know if, uh, let's let's see a pet pet parent journey uh, pre acquisition stage. Uh, you know, a lot of clutter and you know the limited source of right information. Where to acquire a pet? Onboarding on that day, first week. Uh, you know, finding a veterinary services around. If you are a first-time pet pa parent, it's uh, it's it's very difficult. Uh, and I think that's the opportunity for this entire industry uh, which we have. Uh, secondly, you know, as fundamental, uh, you know, all this the the services which which comes uh, with money are still you know somebody has a commercial interest and somebody will reach out and you will still still get some kind of information, but. The basic things like if you have to take a dog for a walk, at times you know those, that infrastructure is not there, and you know when you have a pet, uh, you know it's it's uh, it's not easy for you to uh, be in a society and always get your picture in the society group that you know these are the pet parents and there there is a there are a lot of pet parents who or there are a lot of pet lovers at the same time there are people who don't keep pet uh, they feel it it it, it uh, as, a, as a nuance. Uh, you know, so I think uh, the opportunity uh, we should not look at it uh, from a uh, from a very transactional point of view. I think we should look at it from the pain points of all the stakeholders in the ecosystem, and we should try to solve that pain point. This is this is one of the opportunity which we have in terms of understanding so the pain points. Creating more of, awareness and making yeah. it easy for people. Right. And then you know we also need to understand the pain points of the people who are there in industry. Uh, you know that's the opportunity, big opportunity today. As basic as that in this industry, we don't have uh, standards for ma manufacturing pet food. If we don't have a standards for manufacturing pet food, you know it's a big risk on the health of uh, cats and dogs. Uh, you know, so we are we are living on a ticking time bomb. Uh, you know, so if the standards are not there, you know anything can anybody can sell or produce or whatever. So that is the first thing which we should be trying uh, and partner with government to, you know, create those standards. Uh, then, you know, the taxations are high. You know, the, the there are so many other things which which we need to uh, pet parents education. Uh, I'll give you one example. You know, the, both these uh, veterinarians are, uh, you know, sitting aside me. Uh, we don't have a uh, vet nurses. Uh, educated vet nurses or organized vet nurses in the industry. You know, it takes about 10 years for them or five years for them to educate a normal layman, layperson, uh, to convert them to a vet nurse. And that's the big pain point in a country like India where we have a young dividend and, uh, you know, the, our population is young. The, the, there's an industry which does not have, a, you know, kind of veterinary nurses. Uh, so these are some pain points and, uh, you know, which we need to look at. And I think the opportunity lies in solving each of these pain points and, uh, you know, uh, converting them to an opportunity and convert them to the ease of having a pet. Absolutely. So the population is growing, the pet population is growing. We, we just need to make it easy for, uh, for them to uh, adopt and take care of their pets, plus bring in some regulations so that all the love can actually make sense. Uh, Pallavi, would you like to add on your perspective on how technology can play a role a role in this? Uh, do, you, do you see technology enhancing pet care services, particularly related to pet nutrition? Yeah, I mean, technology anyway in all our lives is playing a very critical role. And 
as we are seeing humanization increase as we are seeing pets becoming more and more an integral part of our families uh, there there are trends that we are seeing evolve in terms of pet care whether it's to do with food ideologies for example what what should i feed my pet and and there are different ideologies to each their own but i mean there are ideologies there are trends around uh, health concerns for for animals which are becoming more and more critical uh, not uh, more from a preventive perspective what can we you know what can we do uh, and of course uh, i think the large part uh, or one critical part for te where technology can play a part is the whole pet owner experience uh, which is exactly what satinder just said that how can we enhance that uh, you know for the pet owner and if we look at our own lives everything today is available at a click of a button right i mean i i joke about it that i don't get anything into my house which cannot be delivered to my doorstep because that's how simplified life has become and that's what we have done to our lives using technology and it's exactly the same technology that pet owners also with the growing love for pets with the growing responsibility of pets will demand from from the likes of industry from the likes of uh, retailers from the likes of vets and so on and so forth so of course technology has a huge role to play in simplifying the lives of consumers and rightly so and and their demand is only going to increase and and we have to sort of uh you know level up our playing field to cater to their demands of course as far as uh, purina is concerned we in in terms of food and nutrition technologies we do use a lot of big data we, we use a lot of predictive intelligence omnics technology and so on to make sure that we have nutritional interventions that can enhance the uh, not even not only the longevity of the animal but also that they should lead a healthy life it's not only long it should be long and healthy both so yes in various aspects of technology there is a huge role that all of us can play to ultimately simplify and make the uh, life of a pet owner more joyous and and uh, more fulfilling absolutely so technology does have, have a role to play you also covered a bit on trends and maybe i'll uh, move on to dr umesh now uh, dr umesh would you like to build on uh, some of the trends that you foresee dominating uh, the, this pet food and care industry going forward yeah i mean it's a very big question probably i, I think i'll have enough time to talk <laughs> about the trends okay so i mean it's exciting as i said okay you know uh, 20 years ago so with the concept of uh, pet food was not there at all I, mean, i still remember a okay, case so how the people really evolved in the last 20 years and okay so i'm sure the industry people agree with me okay the what we call as a calorie conversion so how many people are really feeding the balanced pet food what we call so the nutrition the pets deserve okay to really make them happy and healthy so that they live longer uh, so we all been okay country of a tradition and culture are deep rooted okay when it comes to the feeding practice uh, but nevertheless okay, in spite of that okay you know so we have got a, as i said you know we have a uh, uh, most pet parents are internet savvy they have access to information and in the last two, one decade we have seen suddenly a big burst okay, in the way they use the pet food and it really dramatically increased it was less than 1% now is almost close to 10% or maybe okay so the number of people are using a pet food has dramatically increased and the awareness of the pet food is very high but still if i see okay when i my observation okay what are the trends look like and particularly with the gen x okay pet parents okay the expectations are very very high so i just dotted on few okay the trends which i'm really seeing nowadays so in fact one important thing is that human food made a very big influence on the pet food so the trends happening in the human food tend to really okay, roll on to the okay, the pet food it's like okay, it's the globally it's the same phenomena so one of the important thing i see when i talk to the parents is uh, so called the personalized nutrition you know every pet is there okay is a kid and is a family member and okay i know i've been feeding this brand that brand everything i'm still not convinced like okay, what is there in the bag so i want to make sure that my pet i'm happy to come i can afford it can i get a personalized nutrition so it's possible with the ai okay with the integration with ai now it's possible some of the you know companies already working on it so make sure that they customize the nutrition and okay because every pet has a different lifestyle now the dogs are so different to us okay so they are really uh, doing as much as a kid in the terms of a uh, you know the gadgets ai so just one example i ask always the pet parents i've been particular giving this kibble food i uh, don't don't doctor do you think my dog is really fed up eating the same food 365 days a year so i want something like what i give to my child i want something for the breakfast something for the lunch something for the dinner so obviously they look for a different kind of a you know the trend interesting so that is the one important thing i see that 
Then also second thing is that, okay, now the market is becoming more of a premium, okay, driven, okay, uh, you know, the pet food. So-called we classified the industry as economy in the premium. Interestingly, the premium pet food is growing in size. Now from this premium is really changing is to so-called humanized pet food. So what we're seeing is that, okay, so every year, uh, one of the surveys said that 74% of the pet owners want to really try something new. 34% said they want to try something new flavor. You know, so I can't give the games food away uh, time and, and time and again. So they want a kind of a different flavors, like how they give it to the kids, the children. And uh, obviously, in terms of ingredients, they're always a little skeptical what goes in the pet food. So they so-called look for human-grade ingredients. Even the industry are very honest and transparent in what they use. Still, they're looking for so-called human-grade ingredients. That's what you see. Then something like this, all you keep hearing, organic, natural, minimally processed. So uh, all the human food trends are, so are, are, are slowly being I must tell you, okay, the one okay, uh, trend which I saw interestingly is called dehydrated pet foods. Uh, so there is a company which has come out this uh, dehydrated pet food, where okay, there is a uh, automated, the machine delivers this uh, dehydrated pet food. It is customized, it is a time bound, it gives at the exact time and um, exact amount for the particular pet food. So it delivers with a kind of a music, calling a okay, okay, you are dinner time. So the then it delivers dispensers. the dehydrated meat yeah. and okay, then it mixed with the water. And uh, so then, okay, it makes sure that it consumes everything. If you do not, do not consume the everything, again, it goes back and makes sure that next time it try to correct the calories uh, for the particular pet. So this is the send, okay, the trend I'm seeing. The one more thing is that, is it a plant-based or animal-based? So-called vegetarian has become a, a very important in the pets as well. So people think that a vegetarian, okay, so they live longer, they are more healthier than a non-veg. We are being keep seeing that. So, so vegan fat thing, is getting. I mean, this is getting into the okay, the pet food. We don't have any scientific evidence to that one. So uh, they have some time. Okay. Uh, okay. So <laughs> then, uh, so then, okay, the uh, the processing. Okay, what are the things that are happening in the processing from the conventional extrusion technology? Now we have so-called air dry freeze dry, you know, high pressure processed okay, pet food. Okay, so they're all really coming into the market. People are really, really looking to that. Equally, the raw food, controversial, but still we have some people advocating that one. And the format of the pet food, you know, from home food, okay, you know, uh, chapati, okay, et cetera, then to dry cables, they want something different, feeling, you know, mouthfeel for the pets. Crispy and, you know, case like kind of a chewy. So, I mean, this is what I hear from the, okay, the new generation pet parents. And lastly, the ingredients. Okay, do not forget about the ingredients. Extremely important point of a uh, Indian country we can contribute. Proteins is a, one of the most valuable ingredient. So, is a pet food really, you uh, know, industry really making a big contribution in this field in terms of a sustainability? If I remember, okay, so at the moment, globally, there are about 200 million okay, uh, tons of uh, proteins are produced. Not enough. The forecast is almost close to 560 million tons of proteins are required for the people. So the pet food is playing an important role is using alternate proteins. Okay. So you must have heard of so-called insect proteins, meal proteins, and you know, and okay, so and protein coming lots from all of, kinds lots of, of trends coming up in the pet and food. Uh, it's important people understand this. Okay, so that's uh, something that I always look into that one. Thank you. And, uh, Lastly, a couple of minutes. I'm sorry. So. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mishra. So, I, I think we'll, uh, we'll move on. Okay. Uh, okay. And, sorry. Uh, okay, we sorry. will come back to you. Okay. Uh, sure, lots okay. of interesting <laughs> trends you talked about. Uh, but uh, one of the common themes which we heard here is well, that, you know, humanizing and that whole thing about uh, people treat, pet parents treat pets as their own kids. And there's a lot of therefore expectation also that, you know, I want to give variety and all to, to my kids. Do you think... Uh, I'd like to ask Warun uh, to build on this in, in terms of, do you think this, this also leads to a, a challenge in terms of the demand creation that we, that we see? Uh, any thoughts on, you know, what are the challenges uh, that it leads to? Yeah, um, I think first of all, Dr. Amish, thank you. You gave me like five, seven startup ideas. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm, I, you know, I know the question, but I'm still thinking about building on those ideas. So, uh, Why not? <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, yeah, demand creation is very interesting, right? Um, uh, we start from the top, it's very simple to have more pets. Aayin, but you know, when we think about it, we have 35 million pets, right? 33 crore, ka, already coffee, right? Uh, but the idea would always be 
that we will keep adding more and that's the trend right so ab wahan pe issue kahan demand wahan pe aur pets kahan se aayenge um sabse simple thing is i think we also talk about ki pets kiske paas aane chahiye the people who will have the ability to take care take care ki definition alag ho sakti hai but you know we're talking about food processing so we would want them to give the right nutrition everything right a uh, lot of it i believe will get done over time by itself right you know i buy a house because my friends have a house you know i have a partner because well my friends have a partner i have a kid because mere doston ke bacche ho gaye maa baap ne bolna shuru kar de kar lete hain truth hai that's how it it, it it works right and so you we got to keep a, a large generation a large number of people are going to keep pets because well you know my, my friends keep talking about this pet kitni achhi life hai instagram pe photographs achhi hai and they will keep pets because of that so one part of automatic demand generation will get solved from there but i think what we are talking about and what's more important is are people going to be able to take care of the pet in the manner that will help both right it it's called, it should help the industry as well and i would like to say there are two parts to it and this is the second layer of it the first part there is what is called as primary needs primary needs roti kapda aur makan jo humne bahut movies mein dekha hai uska ek pet equivalent bhi hai right so it has to be food and healthcare right and so these two parts are uber critical ultra critical ye ye dono solve इसका डिमांड कैसे जनरेट होगा आई थिंक उसका एक पार्ट बहुत सतेंद्र सर पलवी दोनों ने टच किया कि यू नो इकोसिस्टम होना चाहिए हाउ डू वी मेक द लाइफ ऑफ द पेट पेरेंट इजियर इन अ वे कि यार हाँ रख लेंगे टेंशन नहीं है पल जाएगा एंड वी हैव डन एन एक्सटेंसिव रिसर्च बाय द वे यू नो वे वास्ट द लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल कि यार वाई डोंट यू हैव पेट्स राइट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम यार पेरेंट्स ने अलाउ नहीं किया स्टार्ट फ्रॉम देयर इट कम्स डाउन यार ठीक है यार अब तो अलग अलग रहते हो अब कौन सा पेरेंट्स की सुनते हो यार मतलब पेरेंट्स ने तो शराब पीने से मना किया था यू नो अभी नॉट दैट यू फॉलो दैट राइट सो सो यू कैन कीप इट नाउ नहीं यार अभी बच्चे हैं इनको संभालना है संभालेंगे कैसे राइट एंड एंड देन यू से यार दो बच्चे आपने पैदा कर लिए यार वो तो आपने मैनेज कर ही लिए ठीक ठाक लग रहे हैं ये भी कर सकते हो सो यू नो वेन यू पील द अनियन यू रियलाइज द रीजन इज देर इज दिस झिझक यार मैनेज मुझे पता ही नहीं कैसे मैनेज होगा एंड सो दैट माइंड सेट सो डिमांड क्रिएशन एंड आई एम गोइंग टू रिलेटेड टू द माइंड सेट माइंड सेट इज एप्सोल्युटली क्रिटिकल वो माइंड सेट चेंज कैसे होगा जब हम और पेट्स देखेंगे हम और पेट शॉप्स देखेंगे हम बहुत सारा यू नो आई थिंक पेडिग्री डेड आई पी एल के सॉरी टी ट्वेंटी वर्ल्ड कप के टाइम पर कैंपेन सो वेन यू कीप सींग सो मच मोर थिंग्स अबाउट पेट हैपनिंग यू रियलाइज यार मैनेज हो सकता है वो 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 एक चाहिए पीछे से राइट व्हेन आई सी सो मेनी मोर वेट यू नो वेटनरी क्लिनिक्स आउट देयर व्हेन आई सी सो मेनी फ्रेंड्स बीइंग हैप्पी सो दैट इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ डिमांड जनरेशन एंड वेल आई लैंड इट बाय सेइंग देयर इज दिस होल वेरी लार्ज थीसिस चार्ली मंगर हैज की सॉल्व फॉर द सप्लाई डिमांड विल गेट सॉल्व एंड आई ऑल्सो लार्जली बिलीव इन दैट यू नो द सप्लाई ऑफ the veterinary side of it i think is one of the most critical things which we need to solve obviously the quality and quantity both need to be solved there the number of brands who come into the country will need to be solved and lastly the distribution points right and and, and for like think about hul png they just create a lot of awareness and they say kahin pe bhi jaoge milega hamara maal how do we do a similar stuff for pet care is going to be important specifically pet food bahut sare brands aayenge desh mein abhi hain right you know purina entered last year right or maybe two years ago how with so many more brands coming in how for that demand to get created the consumer needs to know and then consumer needs to be able to put their hands on the product and say it's mine and i'm ready to pay for it wo distribution points create karne padenge i think you've already taken a step by by solving some bit of it with your with your integrated pet service uh startup uh i i'd like to now move to an important aspect which is all about nutrition we've been talking about uh pets and an important element of welfare of pets is uh, providing them with the right nutrition and like we said while we have a very human relationship with our pets and we are treating them as our own uh kids uh, do we understand and uh get uh you know do we understand what the pet needs in terms of nutrition that's something that i'd i'd like to now uh, pass on to mr uh, mr makran uh, 
Uh, you've been in this uh, space of nutrition and dietary nutrition for long. Dr. Chavan, could you share your thoughts on how important a role does dietary nutrition play uh, for pets? And we'll maybe segregate uh, for the sick pets versus uh, the, the normal pets. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great question. And I will cut down some points and keep it brief, don't worry. So, <laughs> Uh, basically, good nutrition for a uh, pet mirrors the good nutritional balance choice for humans also. So it's a question related to one health. You might be surprised with my point that why, how come one health is important here? Because the uh, to choose the correct diet for your pet, there should be good awareness in the pet parents uh, about nutrition also, about their nutrition also. So coming back to his, now uh, we are dividing pet nutrition into uh, wellness nutrition and for and clinical uh, prescription diet nutrition. So for wellness nutrition, there are, uh, the, it's very important to consider some factors of like breed, age, sex, weight, size of your, your pet. And for sick animals, you should uh, correlate with the clinical data. Like if, if there is a liver uh, dog or cat with liver disease, then, then veterinarian should be regularly knowing, doing the values of the liver dysfunction or, or function. So, this, for sick pets, the micronutrients play, play a very key role because if there is a uh, if, if there is a patient or cat, very commonly seen, uh, you see uh, kidney disease. Then in kidney disease, you can't give uh, a high protein diet. That means you can't give chunks of mutton and fish and uh, chicken, but you can give white or boiled egg, which has a great biological value. So these are some small tips and to to give a balanced nutrition for a uh, sick patient, it is not so easy by giving home nutrition or home cooked food. You will need a researched molecule, uh, which will, like say for, if there is skin problem, there will be hydrolyzed protein. If it's a kidney disease, then there is a low, uh, it, then there is a, a, a low protein, but high biological value. If very commonly you see uh, urinary stones in uh, cats and dogs, so you, ca you have to give a low salt diet. So that's where the, this importance of dietary management comes in the picture. So diet for puppy and healthy uh, dogs is, di is different than the diet for the sick pets or clinical cases. So veterinarians uh, play a key role in ad advising you the diet. And on last point, quickly I will make it is what is why you should give pet food to the pet, you know. Because if the dog is eating pet food in future or with the old age, God forbid, and if the pet falls sick, the pets which are used to eat uh, commercial pet food, you can easily convert them into med in, into medicated food. Because if the dog is having home food and if he gets uh, kidney or liver disease, he will not eat any, anything. Then he will survive only on the saline. But if the dog is having a regular wellness diet, you can easily convert that dog for long life for management of kidney or liver disease. So that's the importance of commercial food. Quite a few markers for us to consider when it comes to pet nutrition. So just one point is if you give pet food, correct pet food to your dog or cat or any uh, companion pet, you will see the your vet's face less often. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, <laughs> uh, from a pet, uh, some of the studies that we've done show that pet parents may not be really aware about the importance of this right nutrition for kids. Uh, how, how do you think can we raise this awareness and education about, you know, the, the need for right nutrition for pets? Yeah, as pet parents, choosing the correct diet is very important. So nutrition plays a great role, key role in development uh, of their uh, growth as well as their maintenance of the... So conversion is the key point, as uh, Satinder sir said, that uh, I think the pets who are eating, uh, consuming pet food, the percentage is very low. You can know the... All India, it's six percent. It's six percent, and the biggest room for improvement over there. Again, uh, I'm not going back to the points I said. So, balanced diet is important. The research products you have to ask the veterinarian which are the products which have really come after the research and development. So, they will cause uh, they will give the use the balanced recipes. Food safety is very important. Very few companies are uh, giving uh, uh, importance to that, but thankfully we, we have few. Uh, great companies here, we have Mars, we have Nestle, they are, have research products and they uh, think of a lot of uh, vital uh, vital organs, functions and they, uh, they have their own uh, clinical trials, they have their own uh, uh, best of the uh, uh, best of uh, best of the 
top standard facilities for feeding because I have visited their uh, their centers at Waltham and and in US also. So the way they 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 look after and look after their animals, uh, we can trust the these research molecules. So uh, about awareness in pet parents, I'm coming quickly finishing this is. Uh, feeding schedule is important, their portion control is important, access to clean and filtered water is important, and their communication is also important, their behavior is important. I'll just give you one small clinical case importance. I was, in two minutes I'll finish this. Uh, one uh, pet parent had nine cats, and uh, suddenly all of the cats started having urinary stones and kidney uh, disease, and the cats were young, two years old. So, and I understood there is some missing link here. So I visited that pet parent uh, home residence and I understood that they, suddenly they had, somebody had gifted them some fountains in the living room. So, and they were not changing the water of the fountains. The same water was uh, uh, getting circulated maybe through plants or through mm -hmm. some clay and the cats were eating it. Every cat developed uh, urinary stones and uh, kidney disease. And when we removed those fountains, because cats were drinking, drinking that funny water and they were not drinking the clean water. So, so now this is management is the key. So coming back to the question is uh, you should know the uh, habitat of the pet uh, and also you should educate the pet parents about correct feeding at the right Absolutely. time. Absolutely. I, I think uh, there is a, an important role that vets can play in educating, uh, educating the pet parents. But I also understand it may not be very easy. Uh, Dr. Umesh, I, I would like to add, ask for your perspective and build on what are the challenges that vets today face uh, in you know, educating pet parents about yeah. the need for right nutrition for their pets? Okay, a great question. Okay, so you can stop me, okay? So otherwise I'll just keep <laughs> continuing. So, <laughs> so I mean, okay, so, the, so uh, because it's so exciting, I mean, this is a commonly asked no. question. I mean, okay, the, when I talk to the pet There's parents, so much okay, wealth of knowledge uh, so, that I don't want to restrict you so, talking. So, Satyan just said, okay, why in adult countries most, okay, 90, more than 90 percent are feeding the balanced pet food. So, when it comes to our country, very specifically, so uh, the definition of healthy pet so different. So if you ask, okay, somebody in the Western, I just came back from US, okay, where my daughter say cats. For her, okay, the, everything, life is there, okay. So for them, the healthy pet means, okay, is it growing well, is it a good body condition, okay, and is happy, okay, and is not going to the vets frequently. And this is what they really see in the you know, benefit of balanced food. In India, where we have such a tradition, okay, that we start with the curd rice in the south and the chapatis, okay, in the south. Uh, so people always look, my dog is happy because he's happy greeting me, wagging the tail. So that is a definition of health. So if they look, the dog is barking, chasing another dog. And okay, so they're happy with that. But currently, I see that there is a big shift. Okay, they started defining, okay, what is that really I want from the pet, okay, health, okay, in the point. So more and more people start understanding what really the healthy pet look like. So what will be the consequence of feeding an incomplete pet food? So we have not done much research, okay, on, okay, what will be the consequence of the typical, you know, the uh, home food we feed to the dogs. So probably we are the one first, okay, we did studies about 20 years ago. And we took the, okay, the food okay, the dogs have been fed from the bowl and we analyzed. So 100% of the home food did not meet the requirement okay, no, uh, set by the standards like the NRC or the AFCO. So the people don't see the consequence because they look for the short term, they don't look for the long term. Okay? So if I feed this dog on the incomplete food or the home food, so are they going to you know, fall sick very frequently? Is that okay? The signs of health, like the you know, okay, the shiny air coat, okay, good air coat, and you know, uh, the good potty, very important. Many people don't look into that one. Okay, so uh, body confirmation, everything all okay, important. So that can be achieved only with okay, the balanced pet food. Unfortunately, uh, so people do understand. But try to, okay, still they cannot okay, uh, continue to give the okay, the home food because what I do with the leftovers. You know, so that I made some five chapatis, two chapatis left. So I still have some other brand, okay, so what do I do with the chapati? Should I throw it? So should I really do it? That's the biggest, okay, the challenge we face uh, to educating. And the other thing I, I must tell you that in our country like ours, where you have a different, you know, the diversity, communicating a science of a, a pet food has always been challenging. You know, so that's the vets what always find so it problematic. educating is really that important. And so we need a right platform to make sure that, okay, so the credible platform. 
where they can really talk about balance and nutrition, why it is so important for the health of the pets. Uh, that's exactly very, very Thank important you. right Thank now. Thank you, Dr. Mesh. I think critical, critical for all of us to make, take note on educating uh, yeah. pet parents about the right nutrition. I, we've been talking about pets. Uh, uh, all lives matter, and I'd like to move to uh, uh, Ma'am Geeta. Uh, from an from a animal uh, perspective, I think we've been talking a lot more about domestic uh, animals, but at the same time, you, you talked about share the same love uh, to, to, to the stray animals. We, we keep hearing about uh, the, the human pet conflict, and uh, I'd like to f first invite your views on what are the current, uh, what are your views on the current regulations on animal welfare? Uh, that a quick comment on the discussion sure. before. Okay. Uh, I come at, um, at pet ownership from a totally different angle. And uh, Satyendraji spoke about the challenges of being a first-time pet owner, etc. And you spoke of how you want to give integrated pet services, etc. We look at it from the other angle because we are faced with a huge population of irresponsible pet owners, which leads to abandonment of pets. And therefore, I have a very small, and perhaps it might seem irrelevant at the moment, but the pet product industry has helped. It's made it easier for many people to feed the animals with all our vegan, vegetarian, non-vegetarian apprehensions in many households. But your packaging, the message you all carry on thing always carries a very pretty pedigree. You always show these very cute, and it leads to impulse buying in a very big way. Maybe you're more successful with your marketing than you realize, because it is leading to a nightmare for AWOs who find a lot of these people have gone and bought pedigrees without the least clue on how to take care of them. Uh, I, uh, I've seen abroad, wherever I visited, that some of the products actually carry uh, the full detailing of how you can look after a puppy. So your puppy food can actually carry uh, information on food, feeding, vaccination schedule, and uh, in this way, perhaps actually disseminate some of the information needed to that basic first-time owner, instead of just having such a cute German Shepherd there that we get another 15 German Shepherds in our animal shelter the next morning because they have not known, uh, they do not know about how to give the diet the right diet, they know nothing about grooming, keeping the ears clean, etc. So that's just what I wanted to say a little bit on that earlier subject. Um, I'll begin with the the human pet conflict, which Absolutely. is on the increase. How can we mitigate that? Yeah, how do we mitigate that? I think three points, really. One would definitely be education and awareness, <coughs> which typically begins with children in schools. And the reason that is so important is today we notice a strange phenomenon. Many kids are first generation schoolers. They come back and they teach their parents a lot. So I think we should build on that. And children actually carry back messages to the parents, making parents change. That's how the world is today. And if we teach them kindness to weaker and vulnerable, which includes animals, and we teach them kindness and companionship of animals, then they carry this back. And I think the qualities also transfer to their relationship with other human beings, making them better people altogether and more able to manage life in society. The second solution is the more obvious and practical one which already has been ratified by the Supreme Court, and we have many laws for it, which is the animal birth control program. Reduce the street dog population, the cat population, by sterilization, and people tend to be more tolerant of them. You love to feed two dogs at your gate. When it becomes 20 dogs, you just want to throw, a, you want them to scatter because you can't handle it. So reducing the street dog population is something we are passionate about, fanatical about. It gives the public a chance to be kind if there are fewer animals to take care of in the streets. They are more tolerant and cruelty cases are less. Vaccinating against rabies on this same program makes people feel the animal is safe. The animal, therefore, they are more tolerant. They don't act uh, harshly to an animal. Consequently, animals are less reactive, and you are less likely to get aggression back from animals in the street. <coughs> Lastly, I think, and this is going to be unpalatable to many, is street dog feeding. You know, it, I, think, I don't think you need to be a scientist to say a well-fed dog can be a very docile dog because he only expects kindness from people. Every time a human being approaches it, he expects a biscuit. He's not expecting a stone. So you can shape the behavior of street dogs simply by street dog feeding. And I don't think that is given enough of value, that you can shape the behavior of street dogs by street dog feeding. Every day we get complaints. You know, I take my dog 
फॉर अ वॉक वो देसी कुत्ता आता है जी उस पर झपटा करने के लिए आई सर आप हाथ में क्या ले जाते हैं मैं डंडा ले जाता हूँ मैंने कहा एक चीज़ ट्राई करिए ये बारी बिस्किट या ग्लूकोज बिस्किट हाथ में ले जाइए जब वो कुत्ता अपनी तरफ आता है तो वो दो तीन बिस्किट फेंक दो Now the dog is following him happily, not wanting to do anything to his pet, because he knows at the beginning, at the end of the walk, he's going to get a biscuit. You can shape the behavior of street dogs. Let me tell you, the intelligence beats the intelligence of any pedigree that you can produce in front of me. Okay? They survive by understanding human action, human behavior, body language. That's how they've lived on the street for thousands of years, and that's how they've survived. So I think street dog feeding is really very important. It reinforces the bond between man and animal rather than leading to the aggression and all. Lastly, I, it's very interesting for me, every time you open the newspaper and you see the dog haters and the dog lovers fighting, to realize that 90% of the cases, the violence is from the dog haters, not from the dog feeders. And which, in my mind, proves that there is a link between the cruelty meted out to animals and a social dysfunction in general. A sadistic and a misogynist tendency which leads to cruelty to animals will lead to cruelty to human beings, particularly children and women. This has been proved time and again in Western society by a large number of scientific studies. It's an alarming development in our society, whether it's road rage, juvenile crimes, or whether it's violence against women. I see this on a continuing spectrum. And therefore, I feel that it's really very important we realize that this program, this, this can be mitigated, but it has to create, be done through a lot of awareness and it has to be done through a lot of education on any forum we can find. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, lots of valuable lessons in there on how we can uh, restrict this conflict. Uh, we've, we've covered nutrition, we've covered uh, uh, regulation, uh, and we've covered uh, diet. I'd like now to I'd now like to focus on the operational side of things, and you know that there's an important there's some important steps we could take there. Uh, Satinder, I, I would like to invite you uh, to this uh, to bring your perspective on this. What are the key enablers we can incorporate into our supply chain ecosystem to create a competitive global manufacturing footprint? Anything that we can do there? Yeah, thanks for the question. I think the the first most important piece is that I'm. Again, uh, you know, starting from, let's say, a pet parent, uh, you know, uh, there was a lot of lot said on nutrition. See, if we are feeding something and uh, the pet parent is not able to see any difference, and the and the health of the cat or dog is not having any positive impact, uh, they will be indifferent to feed anything, right? So I think the most important piece uh, is that we need to have a quality standards. Uh, standards of manufacturing pet food, that's, that's the most fundamental piece. Uh, if that is in the absence of that, you know, we don't know uh, the traceability of the ingredients. We don't know the quality of the products which we are feeding in the bowl. Uh, you know, there will be a, if I see a big picture, you know, there will be a conflict uh, on uh, food security uh, as well. Because we would be producing from human uh, food chain. Yeah. And this, as uh, Dr. Umesh said, that there's so much of opportunity for us to look for alternative uh, uh, sourcing. Uh, you know, if we don't structure ourselves with the long-term uh, right approach, uh, this c category will still be evolving, but it will take a shape where government or, you know, somebody has to then cut the, the wings. And do we want that in future? And I don't think anybody here wants that. Uh, the, the interest lies in that we, we take a structured approach and it starts with the having a right uh, uh, you know, quality food standards. Uh, we you know, uh, spend a lot of money on research and development. Uh, we create uh, a separate kind of uh, approach where we are not inf having an infiltration with human food security. Uh, you know, we can look for some of the these brilliant ideas. You know, insect pr protein from insects. Uh, you know, uh, for once it is processed, uh, it does not matter that where what is the ingredient. What matter is nutrient. And if there is enough and more research, uh, you know, it can be uh, very fruitful for for cats and dogs. And we are not having any kind of conflict with human food. And it's it's a coexistence. And we are rather rather adding a value to the nation building. Uh, 
uh, I think this is very important. And, and last but not least, I think this entire uh, logistic piece, if our scale becomes a little better and we are more organized, we can always influence government to have better tariff rates, uh, you know, better imp import duties, you know, some benefits on export. India can only become a manufacturing hub. And I think this is a great, brilliant vision which our government has that we want to become a manufacturing hub for the world. How can we become a manufacturing hub for the, for the world if we are not meeting the standards, uh, the global standards? You know, that's the starting point, and we need to have that so that we can always go and say that we are adding more value. Uh, you know, we are having a better products at a very competitive price uh, with the same kind of sustainability goals. Uh, you know, this is where we are. So we need to create an equitable platform with a very structured approach. Uh, I think there's there's opportunity there. Lots of opportunity in terms of relations that we can yeah. uh, that we need to uh, look for. Uh, why don't you've got an expertise in scaling businesses? From your perspective, what role can new age route to market strategy play in shaping the future of the pet care sector, uh, especially in the context of growing Indian Indian economy? Got it. Um, so. Um you know, the question is on route to market, so let me just break it down for everyone. Ki, uh, just let's think of a new company in pet care who's come and how do they basically reach out to more consumers, right? So, thoda sa, um, you know, I think very simply because uh, it helps me process better. So, a consumer, consumer ke angle se dekhte hai, consumer ko kya chahiye pet, uh, pet food specifically mein. If they don't know about a product, they're never going to buy it. Right? If you don't know there's a new car by Honda, you're not never going to buy it because you just don't know. So the first part will always be awareness. And that is true for anything. It's just not pet food. It's a very common thing. The second part is ki, how do I create an interest in buying that? Right? So well, I now know I have, there's a new car by Honda, but how do I generate my interest? And a lot of times that interest kaafi sare angles. Hote the one is if somebody recommends you that, oh, my friend has this Honda car, or somebody tells you, well, by the way, did you check out that new car? It's really good. Right? Or you go for a test ride. Or you read a testimonial, or you read some advertisement where, let's say, Virat Kohli or Amitabh Bachchan has endorsed the car. You now have started to build trust. That's the second leg, right? So the route to market now is now you know just summarizing it, starting with awareness, and then there needs to be an intent that needs to be created. Right? The third would be a trial. And that becomes a very, very important piece, right? Specifically in the pet care space. Is my dog going to eat it? Well, great. This is the world's best food, right? And well, both your products are really, really good, right? But will my dog take to it? Not very different from here. Right? So that becomes an important piece. And then the fourth is believing and seeing the benefits, right? And I'll come to that. That's a very important thing, which I feel in the route to market, a lot of large brands uh, don't think about, right? And that's my personal perception. So now I'll just break it down all the three um, very simply. So uh, awareness can se generate kar sakte hai, trust can se generate kar sakte hai, trial can se generate kar sakte hai. Now, this is the brand sense. Hai. Let's go to the consumer backwards. Right? Consumer ke life mein they get a pet, right? Like, so they adopt a pet or they go to a breeder to get a pet. Right? In either case, that becomes your first very important point where either awareness or awareness plus intent or awareness plus intent and trial, all three of them happen at the same place. Three things are in one place. All three can happen. So that's number one. Then the pet is going to, from there, going to go definitely have a journey to a vet, right? Sorry, Varun, in the interest of time, I'd ask you to sure. wrap it up in. Sure, sure. So, so, so largely, it's, you know, the go to market will involve all of them. How do we create that awareness, interest? And just, I'll take 30 more seconds. One of the pieces that I feel that, especially all, all brands need to take is, yeah, bechna is one part. How do I retain the consumers? I will consumer ko wapis kaise apne paas leke hao because doctor just mentioned people want different morning, evening, sab kuch chahiye, right? So, 
and that will become that engagement with the pet parent is going to be very critical wo kaise hoga wo sochna padega but i think that is going to become the reason why some of the brands are going to have a larger market share in the future right and so i think that's going to be an interesting piece so then would you like to shortly build on how an integrated approach can be taken uh, in terms of accelerating this growth sure uh, i i think let's go back uh, uh, I think it's uh, so. I, before I even start of uh, you know this integrated approach, I think yesterday I was part of the uh, CEO roundtable where we had uh, honourable ministers. You know, Piyush Goyal uh, was there, uh, uh, Chirag Paswan and Ravneet uh, Singh Bittu were there, and a lot of CEOs. All all FMCG companies, the CEOs were there, and they were taking a lot of pride in uh, uh, saying that you know they are providing uh, this industry is providing a lot of uh, uh, employment. Uh, and i think that you know i felt that uh, and you know the point was they were trying to help building nation and at that moment it it was kind of a penny drop moment for me and you know where in this industry is helping building nation in much 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 bigger way and you know the the uh, how do you how do you judge a society or a nation that the way they treat the vulnerable uh, the the you know vulnerable part of the society maybe it's children elderly people women minorities animals uh, you know and we are here uh, to you know kind of uh, develop that piece we have lot of studies where we have seen that the families who have pet uh, the immunity among the children are much better you know that's building nation uh, the children children are more responsible that is building nation you know and starting from there and then you know definitely look at the pain points i'm saying don't fall in love with solution fall in the love with problem which is what are the pain points in this industry sure. and category so we, and so we solve need that. to look at the pain points sorry we are running short of time <laughs> so i'd like to now uh, ask the last question to our panelists today in 30 seconds each uh, if there was just one sentence one one support you would ask from Uh, from the government, what what would it be? Uh, one one sentence each from each one of you. Maybe uh, we, we could start with you. Pass the amendments to the PCA. Okay. Pass the amendments to the PCA, the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act. It's been on the anvil for three decades, and modern modern times we see unbearable torture and cruelty on animals, and we need the PCA if only to safeguard the health yeah. of this society. So PCA. from your perspective yeah uh, 30 seconds i i will manage we should <laughs> we should improve the diagnostic services and facilities for the pet owners to increase the medicalization rate in india so in simple words uh, i uh, we should data is the driver and content is the king if you generate the um, uh, empirical data then we all can work and make it a better place for animals definitely lots of opportunity there bring standards for manufacturing pet food okay okay um again okay make the market standards mandatory so that quality wins and okay tom dick and harry making the pet food harming the pets okay should stop uh bring the education to the children because she was talking about children so okay so it should be part of that one okay so that's very education very important. important education for the children so how to yeah. take care of the pets uh, warun yeah back benchers have a problem in this sab kuch cover ho jata hai you want to go first right <laughs> before me okay um i i think some of these things are covered i think we need to in the in the veterinary education program we need to have um uh, you know the companion pets as one of the very 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 core um uh, you know education that happens right now it's very small part of the large uh, thing that's number one and number two we need good quality and stringent laws on pet food uh, unless pet parents see the benefit coming out of pet food they are not going to take it to the next level and i think that's where as this industry is going to explode lot of not so high quality product might come in so that, that those regulations are very very critical pallavi your closing thoughts so yes regulation for sure i think that will help us because right nutrition makes a difference and we need people to feel that but i think the large message that and and since i'm the last so i'm going to <laughs> take 30 seconds to say that the large message that i think what i want to say is that it, it's important that government plays a role and if they help us we definitely want to help create this segment and nurture this segment so we all have a part to play there it's not only the government it's it's all of us as well so 
if i have to say one sentence then help us to help build this category and help build the potential of the category because i, I think what we started with is where we end we've just scratched the surface and we need absolutely to i think lots and lots of learnings lots of room to grow and lots to do Achal, I'd like to invite you to do the closing. Thank you, everyone. It's been an enriching discussion. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Neetu, for leading this very important conversation, which we know is a fir first for the pet food industry at a coveted panel like this. A big thank you to all our distinguished panelists for such an insightful and engaging discussion, uh, which is much needed. It was a real pleasure to hear the diverse perspectives on the future of the pet food industry and the challenges we currently face. As we've seen today, the pet care landscape in India is rapidly evolving, and it's clear that there are opportunities for growth, innovation, and collaboration. Whether it's through improving pet nutrition, enhancing sustainability of pet ownership, or addressing regulatory challenges, there's a lot of excitement uh, in the industry, and there's a lot that needs to be done together as we move forward. Uh, as a part of the industry, uh, you know, representing manufacturing and a lot of players here, I can say that there's deep commitment to improve the life of pets. And this conversation today re reinforces the need to work collectively, collaboratively, as industry leaders, regulatory, uh, regulatory representatives, NGOs in the animal welfare, uh, you know, piece, and also as pet parents, which I'm sure some of us are in the audience as well here today, to create an ecosystem where every pet receives the care they, des they deserve. I'd like to thank the Ministry of Food Processing once again for uh, organizing World Food India and making us, uh, the pet food industry, a part and recognizing us. And we hope to be always a part of World Food India henceforth. A special thanks to everyone who joined us today. Your engagement and enthusiasm is visible. And we hope to continue to have this dialogue. Uh, thanks again to the organizing team. Let's push boundaries, innovate, and collaborate to create a thriving future for pets today and beyond. Now, uh, before we disperse, I'd like to invite uh, Govind Suryavanshi uh, uh, from uh, Royal Canin to join me as we thank all the panelists and uh, present them a small momentum. Gauri, can you help us with the momentum? First of all, big thanks, big thanks to the panelists and, and uh, of course, Neetu. Wonderful job. Uh, uh, I would like to take the names and there is a, a small token of uh, gift, uh, which is from Moppy as well as a bouquet for all the panelists. Yeah, yeah. So you can do one by one. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. In case there are questions, you can meet the panelists after the discussion because we have to vacate the venue for the next session. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. We'll, just, we'll just take a quick picture with all the panelists.